Hey, everybody, it's Scott Steen with winnersandwiners.com coming to you with the Tuesday edition of Today in Sports Bending, doing it MLB style with the one and only Scott Reichel sitting in the co pilot's chair. Scott, I think we got all hands on deck. I think everybody everybody's playing tonight, man. How looking about forward, that? Man. Yep, definitely looking forward to it. Got ourselves a lot to talk about. So, yeah, let's do it. Kick it off. Give me your first game that you're looking at. Well, it's got to be a tale of two, I'd say, seasons for these two teams. But it was a play that I am on yesterday. Nice, easy winner. I had the White Sox team total over four and a half. They scored four times that. Scored 16 runs. Nice, easy winner there. But they're facing off against the Twins again. You have Lance Lynn on the mound against Michael Pineda. And Chicago's roughly minus 106 or minus 110. Mm -hmm. Right in that neighborhood. Yeah. Am I being punked or something? Like, what is going on with these Minnesota odds? I, I don't what understand. Like, I, I get Minnesota was very good at home, like, last year and two years ago. Right. You realize that they're one of the worst teams in the league, right? They're dreadful. Again, and the I White Sox are one of the best teams in the league. What are these prices? What is happening? I keep coming back to it. The Minnesota Twins are in last place in a division that has the Royals and the Tigers. I don't know how I'm supposed to not just like the White Sox by default. No. Well, Delhi, I feel like, is guaranteed to get fired unless they win, like, six in a row. They need a little help in a hurry, buddy. They're they not even close. They sure didn't get it last night. I forgot. The White Sox have played them, what, four times this year? They're 4 and I think. Yes. Yes. The, the White Sox are, uh, have, have not lost to the Twins yet this season. And it's been there's been some ugly, there's been some ugly losses, including the 16 they put up last night. Every game the White Sox have covered the run line. Oh yeah, out, out of oh, those yeah. four, the Twins haven't been close to this team. No, no, they've they've put up 42 runs in four games, Scott. I'm saying, but I, I'm just saying the, the Twins in each individual game have lost by two or more runs all four times. So you're yeah. giving me pick them. You have Minnesota as a temporary favorite on Fanduel. What are you out of your mind? Yeah, I don't really, I don't really get it. They just, uh, we we just we just did this. We just played this game the last time out um, for these both of these pitchers as Pineda went against Lance Lynn. And Lynn's actually pretty good. He's been having a great season, Scott. He's really kind of had a, a nice kind of a, a continuation of, of of a good last year. Certainly a good first half last year. But he pitched against the Twins back on the thirteenth and. Uh, that was a 4-2 win for Minnesota. As, you mean for Chicago? Or for Chicago, rather, as the, uh, Lynn went five innings, gave up just two hits, no earned, one unearned run, struck out nine. Nine right there, Scott. Uh, meanwhile. Pineda's been good, too, but Lynn's been better. He's been, he's been okay, but he's going to – he's a guy, he's the kind of guy that's going to that's gonna get dinged. He's been better – he was good early. He was really good in his first two in his first four starts, but he's kind of uh, or his first three starts rather kind of dropped off the map here a little bit. In his last four, I, I don't know how you I don't know how you take the Twins here at, at all. And the only thing I know is that the White Sox are eleven and seven on the road. The Twins are seven and fourteen at home. The White Sox are in first place. The Twins are in last place, and the White Sox have the better pitcher and the better bullpen. How yeah. are they minus one hundred six? I don't, I don't understand it. Well, I don't know you where you set look. this line to like minus one forty, and I would understand it. I would. I would think. I think. I think that's probably a little extreme, but I think the one twenty five to one thirty range is yeah where it should be. So but yeah, White Sox. I I gotta go with the White Sox. I I don't know how you're supposed to back Minnesota at any point. Yeah. Um, all right. So how's that Mike Trout MVP ticket looking right now, Scott? Uh, depends on how the injury reports come back, but I'm trying to get a refund. You know, I was watching that game. Because it didn't look good. We had the Indians there. Well, it didn't, it, it didn't look bad. He was literally, saying, with, with, with all this non-contact stuff though, that's like a guarantee trip on the aisle. He was literally jogging to third base because they just made the third out and he didn't, he hadn't reached third base and pulled up lane. Do you want to guess? Okay, I'll give you a choice. You got a 50-50 shot. Quad or hammy? It didn't. I'm going quad. He was he was really mad, Scott. Yeah, he was annoyed. Um, I think it could be. It could I be think, a foot thing. I don't. I, I'm I just. Could, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go somewhere 
below the knee. Okay. With a possibility of the knee, but I don't think so. I think some like ankle, foot. I, I just don't know. It was really weird to watch, and they showed a replay of it. And nothing there. So I'd be curious to see tomorrow what they what they announce is that. I'm, I, I'm, I'm guessing based on his reaction, he's going to the 10 day. Uh, he's, he's pretty much guaranteed to go to the 10 day, but it's really a fun time. You know, I got two parlays. I got the Grum. I got Trout. I got Burns. All injured or out within the span of the first two months. Burns is back now. But yeah, I'm kind of just stuck. There's not really much else I can say about it, you know, because Otani keeps playing well and I'm going to watch Trout's odds fly through the roof anyway. So you got a feeling you got, you got a feeling on this one as uh, Zach Plesak goes for the Cleveland Indians against Andrew Heaney, one of our personal favorites, um, going for the Angels. Angels, big favorites here, about minus 140. I don't agree with that line at all. I think it should be closer to uh, 120 or so. I know that Cleveland has lost, I believe, four in a row. And I know that the Angels have really been pleasantly surprised by Heaney's pitching because he's actually been good this year for the most part. He's been, he's been non-terrible, although he was, he was terrible his last time out. I'm saying compared to normal Heaney numbers, they're more respectable than they usually are. Yeah, he's had, he's had three dreadful starts and four good starts. Yeah, which is more than 50, which is about – I don't know, 40% better than what he normally does. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's about right. The reason why I can't go with the Angels here is the fact that nothing to do with the Angels, nothing to do with the Indians being due to get back or anything like that. They're playing some terrible baseball. But you're telling me the Angels without Mike Trout are, are minus 140 better than the Indians? Yeah, we so might have no to. no way that's factored into the price. You wouldn't, you wouldn't think so. Yeah, absolutely. Without Trout, this should be like minus 115. You know, I fell, I fell into this trap yesterday, Scott. I thought we, we had the pitching advantage with Cleveland. And the Indians can't hit. They can't hit. They can't score. They can't score any runs. No, my favorite play in this game is the under. I, I just think that the under is a good bet here because the Angels should be compromised offensively, especially now that Otani has no support. They're going to move up and up and just hope that, you know, he can keep Otani – from, like, you know, seeing good pitches. Like, no, they're going to start pitching around Otani because he's been very good. And you look at Heaney, who's been pretty good at times, but the Indians can hit. Plesak's been good for the most part. Uh, I know he blew up a couple of times, but the Angels with no trout offensively, that's going to be a problem. And I think that Plesak and Heaney should do a pretty good job. So I like the under. I get that. This is a uh, this is a Cleveland team that has scored four or less in their last seven games. They put up four last night, despite having eleven hits. So uh, finally, they break through for a few hits, but they just aren't efficient. I don't want any part of an under with Heaney on the mound. I just don't. I mean, this is a guy that when he melts down, man, he seriously melts down. Angels in his bad in his bad performances, Scott. He's given up four, five, and seven runs well let me see if i can find out exactly what the angels team total is but that's a fair point um it's gonna be four and a half uh it's four and a half the under is at about minus 129 i like the under four and a half with no trout okay all right fair enough all right very good any thoughts on the total you, you like the under there as well for the full game right i don't get the under for the full game but angels team total under with no trout dealing with Plesak and the number one bullpen year right in the league. That's you're you, you gonna fall in the Cleveland trap with me again and grab and grab the uh, Indians here. I'm tempted to, but then I acknowledge this team has played terribly lately, so yeah. I, I'm not gonna overreact to it. But I'm also not gonna ignore it and say this team right now isn't very good. Yeah, they're uh, they're they're struggling offensively, and you know, every game is independent of of the game before that, sort of because. Baseball tends to be a really streaky game because hitting is a streaky situation and guys get in slumps, man. And, and they're just slumps. That's the way, that's the way it is. So it's not quite an independent event. It's it, it baseball is a very, very, uh, it's a, it's a game of runs. It's a game of streaks right now. Cleveland's in a bad one. Yeah. They're due to break out. And this could be, this could be a good opportunity uh, for them to actually break out because they're a, uh, a team that, you know, they don't uh, – they do okay against lefties. They're not, they're not a dreadful team against left-handers. They're, they're actually pretty average against, against both 
uh, against both right-handers and lefties, but this is a team that hits 210, uh, Scott, as, as a team. That's you not know, good. No, no, they hit they hit a monstrous 225 against lefties. That's huge. Which which means they're probably hitting somewhere in the buck 85 range against right-handers. <laughs> Youch. That's not good. Not good at all, man. But you know, the crazy you're... part is that you can probably find some more stats on about half the teams in the league. I don't know you can find many sub-200. Not that bad, but you know what I mean. Like, yeah. If, oh, yeah, no, everybody. a lot of ugly stats. Average, the, uh, yeah, the, the average is down. You know, the, the Angels are, are only one of the few teams that have, like, fairly normal-looking stats as they uh, hit 249, which – And the White would, Sox. It would usually put you in the bottom half. Like, the White Sox have phenomenal hitting stats, but that's a given. Like, you notice, like, that team has just a ton of talent. Rake is what the White Sox do, buddy. They yep. rake. Just so. All right, very good. So Cleveland maybe, but definitely the under there. I don't love the under. I'm going to fall for the Cleveland trap. I said the team total under. You can still take that. That's that's solid. That's solid. Um, yeah, yeah. Plays plays has been good. Three five six sub mm-hmm. sub one whip. He's been he's been okay. Anything else get your attention here today? Well. Uh, looking at the rest of the card, I still got to do my play of the day video. So I feel like I know what I'm going to do, but I haven't officially made it yet. So we'll see. Um, Can I interest you in plus money fading Sean Manaya with uh, Christian Javier? I really thought you were going to say plus money with Matt Harvey. I really thought that's how you were going to finish that sentence, but you ended up going in a different direction. Which game are we talking about? We're talking about the Houston-Oakland game. Okay. Well, I know that Manaya got, well, shelled. Destroyed. Uh, how any other phrase you want to use by Boston in his last game? Beat up badly. Meanwhile, Houston has Javier, who we both think has some potential. Big fan. A solid pitcher. Yep. Big so fan. far, the season. How would you describe the season so far? How would I describe Javier's season so far? Yeah, I'd say not surprising us, surprising others. Yeah, I think I think that's the case. He's he's got you know like I said three three oh eight ERA. He's been he's been a little better than solid. Yeah. Um, Scott, at what point the problem with Javier is he's he's pitched he's really hasn't pitched well lately. No, he's he's uh he's given up eleven earned over his last seventeen and third innings. That's not ideal, right there. He was absolutely outstanding to start the season. Gave up a. Uh, he had a nice little string of 17 shutout innings going. but uh, Well, we were roasting Cleveland for being unable to hit. Oakland's not really good at hitting either. No, another team that, another team that doesn't hit very well. <sighs> I'm looking at Houston. I know that it's a yeah. spot where people might want to take the A's, but Houston is 5-2 and two against the A's so far this season. Uh, Houston has also won a couple of games in a row, and I'm sure a lot of people have not noticed – it's a lot more fun to notice when the Astros are bad than when they're good. Uh, but you're looking at them. They ended up winning six in a row. Then again, you play Texas four times in a row, and they're just handing you wins, unless you're the Yankees. But at the end of the day, I just think Houston right now is the better team. They're in better form. And with Manaya getting shelled in his last start and Javier being underwhelming recently, but I still like him as an overall player. I can't get past Oakland's offense just being unable to hit half the time, so I'll go with Houston. All right, very good. And he did pitch very well in his uh, one performance against Oakland this season back on the 8th of April, went five innings, gave up three hits, two walks, seven strikeouts, no earned runs. So Javier has had some success against the boys from the Bay. So, yeah, we'll play that one. Anything else before we get out of here? Uh, no, not really. Maybe the Giants as a small sprinkle because Castillo has been awful this season. He really but has. That's pretty much it. All right, very good. As always, guys, if you're looking for information on these games or any others, don't forget to stop by and check out winnersandwiners.com, your one-stop shop for all things sports betting previews, predictions on every single game, every single day. Great resource, always free, winnersandwiners.com. For both of us, we appreciate you guys watching. Thanks very much for stopping by. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Good luck on all your plays. Hope every one of those tickets in your pocket turns into cash money when you head back to the window. Guys, have a great day, and we'll see you tomorrow on Today in Sports Betting.